Back in grade four, we learned how to write in cursive. And of course, at the beginning, it wasn't that difficult because you had the little lines that you could write your letters in. Uh, but I still didn't do that well. And uh, one of the grades in your uh, report card was uh, handwriting and uh, always got needs improvement, a B. Uh, by the time I got in grade four, uh, we no longer had the lines and we had to write a whole lot more. And my handwriting got worse and worse and worse. And uh, I started getting C's uh, in handwriting. Uh, by the time that grade five came, uh, our teacher said, hey, you know, uh, if you're able to write really well and get the cursive down, you can no longer you no longer have to write with a pencil. You can write with a pen. And of course, the entire year I was looking forward to that, but never got to write with a pen because my handwriting was atrocious. And uh, I had to practice and practice and practice. And guess what? Still, my handwriting is worse than ever. My handwriting is bad mainly because I just don't practice. I hardly write anything ever anymore, especially uh, since most of the things I use are for, with, the, with the computer. Uh, and over the past several weeks, we have dealt with this staple verse uh, in which our series is based off press. And the verse is Philippians 3.14, which says, I press on to reach the end of the race and receive the heavenly prize for which God, through Christ Jesus, is calling us. Now, pretty much everyone's heard the saying, practice makes perfect. And the idea is that if you do something uh, with enough repetitions, then you get good at it. Now, this is the truth when dealing with spiritual issues. As we grow in Christ, uh, we find that through difficult uh, trials and circumstances, we learn to act and live like Jesus. But I just had this thought in my head. What if you're struggling right now? Life is not getting easier, and, and when you go through the fires of life, uh, you find that instead of being like Christ, your flesh wins out. I know that with family problems, financial problems, health problems, and of course people problems, uh, these things happen. And, and like that guy that cut, off, cut you off this morning in traffic, or that individual that uh, just did something totally stupid, and, and you're pulling your hair out asking, why would you ever do that? Uh, with these issues that rise up, sometimes we fail. Uh, we don't do the perfect thing. Uh, we stumble through our messes just knowing that at any moment we will fall flat on our face. And anybody like that today? Uh, but here is the good news. The Lord wants you to be victorious. The Lord wants you to press. The things that you're going through are molding you into something that God will use for His glory and for His purpose. So how do we keep practicing? How do we keep going? And what benefit is it uh, in the life of the believer to overcome these trials of life? Uh, uh, in the uh, closing chapter of Philippians, the Apostle Paul is saying his farewells and trying to give some last-minute encouragement uh, to the people. In Philippians 4, 9, he says this, Keep putting into practice all you learned and received from me, and everything you heard from me and saw me doing. Then the God of peace uh, will be with you. The first thought today is that practice living God's truth. Uh, Philippians 4.9 again says, Keep putting into practice all you learned and received from me. Uh, the idea of that Greek word there is to, to learn by studying or experience. And we are not quite sure how long the Apostle Paul was in Philippi, uh, but we know that he had a deep love for them. And we also know that, the church was, that a church was established there. And this was the first church that was established in Europe and is the only church mentioned as an example for others to follow. And the great thing about the Philippian believers uh, is that they were that were keep. Uh, they were already practicing all they had received from the Apostle Paul. The idea of received is something that is inherited or handed down, like a father giving an inheritance to his child. Uh, if you think about it today, we are receiving those same truths that the early church received. So we are passing them down to the next generation by putting them in, into practice. Uh, I was watching a, a game between the, uh, between the Spurs and the Mavericks the other day, and one of the commentators 
uh, made this comment about Coach Popovich. Uh, there was a player uh, at the time on the court that was making some really bad mistakes. And so he got pulled aside and yanked from the game. And the commentator said it didn't matter who that person was. Uh, if Coach saw them making all these mistakes, he would, he would yank them out. And, and this got me thinking. I know that God many times has yanked my heart aside and let me know that I'm not doing what I should be practice, do, practicing doing. And sometimes uh, it's reading His Word. I come across something that I should be doing or doing better. Uh, sometimes I, I get convicted on what kind of father I should be or husband that I am. I remember uh, several years back going to a Stephen Curtis Chapman song, uh, concert, and uh, one of his new songs was "I Dance with Cinderella," and it's about it was a song about his uh, his young daughter, and and I just remember uh, listening to that song that he had written for her, and I, it got me so convicted at the time. My little girls were uh, Abby and Ashley were just little tiny things, and immediately after singing the song. Uh, I wanted to get up out of my chair and run home just so I could be the daddy that I should be. And of course, the funny thing was, it was like right there at the beginning of the concert. So I had waited to the end and then we were able to leave and go and, and uh, I got to hug and love on them. Leviticus 19.37 says, You must be careful to keep all of my decrees and regulations by putting them into practice. I am the Lord. You know, when God tells us to do something and we fail to put it into practice, how will we accomplish anything? No wonder we struggle as, as so much as believers. Now, I will admit there are some things that God asks us to do that just aren't easy, like loving those who do bad things to you, dealing with mockery because you're just trying to do the right thing, uh, living by faith when your world is falling apart. Uh, we don't do as God commands just because it's easy. We do it because He is our Lord. Uh, if we are to continue to press toward the high mark, we need to practice what we preach. Uh, the second thought today is we need to practice following after godly people. When I was a little kid uh, in primary school and grade school, we always played this game, follow the leader. Uh, when little Stevie would march his little feet, he'd say, everybody follow me, and we would march along with him. Uh, the problem was, is since we were all little kids, most of us did not want to follow. We wanted to be the leader, and so we always fought uh, to be the leader. And, and Philippians 4 9 says, Everything you heard from me and saw me doing. In life, uh, the good and the bad, when going through the fiery trials, you know, we need to attach yourself to godly people that have overcome and are pressing. Now, I want you to know that we just don't follow anybody. 1 Corinthians 11 1 says, And you should imitate me just as I imitate Christ. The key here is not. Uh, those that are demonstrating uh, religious, sanctimonious, or pious behavior. But these imitators are those who we can see genuinely following after Jesus Christ. They practice what they preach. Uh, they're not hypocrites saying do this or to do that uh, while living contrary to God's word. Now, of course, they're not perfect. No one is. It doesn't mean that they won't sometimes even fail but they're doing their very best to be imitators of Christ. And the idea of this imitator is one that grows into that position, one who is changing who he is, one who is ordained to be. You know, we don't just start off like Jesus, but as we grow in Christ, we should be influencing other believers to live like Jesus. And to do this, we need catalysts in our own lives to help us to be successful in our Christian walk. Because this is what God calls us to do. The early church in Philippi understood this truth. Paul says, do what I did. And he says, say what I say. He wasn't bragging on himself. Uh, he was just trying to be an imitator of Christ. Uh, when I was uh, in high school, I was at church and there was a uh, one of our men there named Bobby Price. And Bobby Price, uh, you know, he would always tease me and, and, and joke with me and uh, ask how I was doing. And, you know, he would grab my hand. And he literally, when he grabbed my hand, he wanted, I, I thought he wanted to break it. Uh, but he said, a man needs to shake a man, another man's hand with, with, uh, uh, with strength to show that he's not weak. And so he would grab my hand and try to break it so I would squeeze his hand harder. Uh, but one of the good things that I remember about Bobby Price, I knew he loved the Lord. Uh, I remember uh, going to camp. 
uh, one year and we didn't have a lot of money and so they did this thing where they had the youth go and work for uh, different members of the uh, of the of the church and uh, when that happened we would go out and maybe do yard work or uh, do some cleaning and uh, they would help sponsor us so that we could go to camp and I, I went to Bobby Price's house and I remember I hardly did any work uh, but yet Bobby Price still gave me the full amount that I needed uh, to go to camp. And uh, even after I surrendered into ministry, he was one of my encouragers telling me uh, that, uh, you know, you can do it, you know, uh, love the Lord, do, 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 do good things, do what God wants you to do, follow after his will, all those things. And, you know, we need individuals like that in our lives. You know, they're not perfect, uh, but they are trying to live like Jesus. And we need to surround ourselves with them. Uh, and it will help us to grow closer to God. And it will help us when those trials come into our lives because we know that we have brothers and sisters that will pray for us, encourage us, and give us a visible example of how to overcome. The third thought today is that we need to practice staying close to God. In Philippians 4, 9, again, it says, Then the God of peace will be with you. And as we follow God's truth and listen to the wisdom of godly people, we will find ourselves being at peace with God. That peace only really comes when we are close to God. And the truth is, is that it's easy for a believer to get distracted. Uh, we get out of God's word. Uh, we fail to spend time with God. We don't surround ourselves with godly people. Uh, we need to make sure uh, that we make a habit of being in the will of God. In 1 John 1, 6, it says this, So we are lying if we say that we have fellowship with God, but go on living in spiritual darkness. And listen to this, we are not practicing the truth. This was written to believers, and unfortunately, these believers were not living the truth, and fellowship was broken. Now, notice it doesn't say the relationship. We can still be a believer and not have good fellowship with God. It's like our sin is constantly building a wall between us and our Lord. And that wall can only come down when we repent. Uh, when I was young, um, you know, sometimes I would have to get up in the middle of the night and it would be dark uh, in the house and I had to go to the restroom. And I do remember one specific time uh, that that happened, mainly because I didn't make it back to my room very well. As I was walking back to the room, even though I knew exactly where it was, I must have been really tired, but two different times I ran smack into the wall. And I still remember that today because I had a knot on my head. You know, why do we run uh, into spiritual walls? It's because we're walking apart from God. We're not walking in the light. We're not practicing the truth. How can we press on towards the high calling of Jesus if our hearts are not right with God? The truth is, is that we can't. So let us practice what we preach. And today, maybe you're struggling with that. Maybe you're struggling to uh, live for the Lord. Maybe uh, the fires of life are just crushing you. Uh, you feel like the weight of the world is on your shoulder. Uh, it's, it's, you're miserable. What can I say is that the only thing that we can do is to pray and ask God to help us to make sure that we're surrounding ourselves uh, with godly people that will pray and lift us up and give us the example because, you know, they have also gone through many trials in their lives as well, and we can use that encouragement as we press on towards the high calling of Christ Jesus. And if you're a non-believer today, if you've never trusted in Christ, I pray that today is the day of salvation, because how can you make it through life without God? How can you make it through uh, all the different trials and all the different problems that we see that are around us without God in your life because he loves you, he died for you, and he wants a relationship with you, and he wants you to press. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, God, thank you for the day. Thank you for who you are. Thank you for your mercy and your grace. And I pray that everything that we do and say today will honor you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you guys. Have a great day.